Hi everybody, this is Daniel Chris from Prehistoric Facts. This is a Q&A episode, so I gave, gave myself a, couple, a week off to actually make sure that I actually uh, get some things done. But at least uh, I can actually get the Q get the episodes done and quickly, so let's actually get this uh, Q&A session start, started, shall we? So Brenda from Morris, New York. Um, so, do you have advice for aspiring paleontologists who wanted to work overseas in foreign countries? And uh, do you think there will be more opportunities for American paleontologists to work at museums and universities in foreign countries like China, Alberta, Egypt, uh, Germany, Japan, Argentina, India, England, and the future. Well, first of all, to your first question, um, do I have any advice for any uh, aspiring paleontologists that want to work in uh, overseas and like other countries? Well, um, <clears throat> uh, first of all, you actually got to know uh, which. Uh, uh, which country you want to go to, and uh, but mo mostly uh, for in terms of if you're already in a university and you're studying paleontology already, I would suggest that you actually do study abroad, and uh, if you actually enjoy that country a lot, then maybe you could actually start thinking about like maybe that uh, at some point you could actually live in that country at some point, but also citizenship could actually be uh, something that actually has to be uh, considered though. Uh, but um, I'm pretty sure they give you like a like a like a work visa or something like that. I think all countries do that. Uh, but um, but yeah, I mean you can actually do that. Um, I have never been overseas myself. Uh, I mean I wish I could, but uh, I just don't have the money to do so. And then your second question uh, is: it, Would there be more opportunities for American paleontologists to work in other countries and like museums, and universities? Oh, absolutely. Uh, there's um, there's Steve Brissotti. Uh, he's originally from. He's usually. He's originally from the United States, but he actually works in uh, Scotland. Uh, he works in the university in Scotland, and uh, there's um, there's other uh, paleontologists out there that actually work that were born in from one country, but actually work in a different country. Uh, there's Hans Seuss, uh, who is the um, one of the chief paleontologists at the uh, Smithsonian. Uh, he's originally from uh, Germany, I believe, and he's actually. Uh, lives in the United States. There's Phil Manning, uh, who was originally from uh, Britain. He used to work in Britain, but, I, but last I saw, he's actually working in the United States. He's working in a university in the United States. Um, I think uh, I think there's also um, a couple of Canadian um, paleontologists working in the United States, but. Uh, but yeah, in terms of American paleontologists working in other countries, oh, absolutely, that can actually definitely happen. Uh, it's just that um, in the United States, the paleontology um, um, occupation is, tends to be very full most of the time. It's just that the the um, paleontologists that we grew up and knew uh, when we were kids, like say uh, like say Robert Bacher, uh, Phil Phil Curry, uh, Tom Holtz, you know, all those guys. Um, Sometimes they just. Sometimes it has to be a while before there's like an opening for uh, paleontology opportunity. Um, but there's like museums you could work for, that like be like an intern uh, for like a paleontology group, paleontology department, or otherwise uh, go on a dig on like a like a, a company that actually does um, fossil digs. Uh, there's like the uh, USGS and also there's the GSA. Um, Paleontology uh, opportunities. It's just that they're mostly looking at university uh, students and high school students that are actually a little bit more interested in doing something like that. But uh, but yeah, I mean, always look for opportunities. Always look for opportunities. In uh, if you desire to actually work for a country, work in a country that you think it could actually deserve a little bit more inspiration in paleontology, yeah, you can do that. You can do that. Uh, I've never been overseas myself, so. Um, but uh, at least um, probably try to contact at least like uh, a paleontologist that has worked um, and or actually is working in a different country like Steve Brissotti. I mean, I'm pretty sure he's got a lot of on his plate right now, a lot on his plate right now. But uh, I'm pretty sure if you email him, I'm pretty sure he can actually um, uh, give you some tips on on uh, what could actually be the case to actually work in a different country in the paleontology in the paleontology uh, community. And then Benjamin from Hong Kong is Patagotitan the longest of any sauropod dinosaur? No, that belongs to Ephesilius. Is Camarasaurus the most commonly Jurassic sauropod? 
Uh, I would say so. Uh, I would say it's up there with uh, Apatosaurus, because uh, Apatosaurus and Camarasaurus are the more common uh, sauropods in the late Jurassic and the Morsa formation. Um, that I can actually say that about that is that they're the more common. Brachiosaurus, Diplodocus. Oh, Brachiosaurus would be a little bit uh, rare, um, whereas um, uh, Diplodocus, it's somewhat common. It's somewhat, not like totally, not like very common, but probably somewhat common. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'd say Camarasaurus and Apatosaurus would actually be the ones that are pretty much the more common uh, sauropod dinosaurs in the for Morsa formation. Is Eotriceratops the largest of all horned dinosaurs? Looked it up. Yes. Uh, the skull, because you see, it looks like Triceratops, and so I would say that uh, there might be uh, some research done. There might be some research going on of whether or not Eotriceratops is. A very large uh, Triceratops, uh, but uh, from my understanding right now, it's still its own species. But uh, we'll see what the what the um, the results would actually be if it is an actual a very large specimen of Triceratops. But we'll see. Is Bastihaviverser as large as Displetosaurus? Not totally. Um, when we actually look at the Spletosaurus, the Spletosaurus can reach 30 feet with Bistahavis, Bistahiverser uh, would actually be around 25 feet. So Bistahiverser would actually not be as large as the Spletosaurus, but they're pretty close in terms of height. It's just that I think the Spletosaurus is a bit more robust uh, than uh, Bistahavir, Bistahavi. Just a heaver, sir. Excuse me, I keep saying this name all wrong, but uh, but anyway, yeah, I, I'd say that it's it's a tad bit short in terms of length, whereas it, whereas muscle mass, it's not as pop, it's not as strong as uh, Displetosaurus. And are Euoplocephalus and Dioplosaurus the same dinosaur? Look this up. No, they are not. They are not the same dinosaur. They belong in the same family, the Ankylosaurian, uh, but they're not actually the same dinosaur. Uh, if you actually, because if you actually, because of what I know about Diaplosaurus, is that uh, is that m mostly the skull, uh, the holotype is actually a, a piece of the skull. Uh, I don't know if there's any more um, of the spec any more specimens of Diaplosaurus found anywhere. Uh, I know all I know is one is the holotype specimen, but the Euoplocephalus uh, can get can get to 30 feet, uh, whereas um, Diaplosaurus can actually be 20 to 23 feet, and so that actually solves the question. And also the scutes are very different from each other. Uh, Euoplocephalus's uh, scutes are a bit more smooth and uh, not as pointy, uh, whereas Diaplosaurus has actually uh, got more pointy scutes. Uh, on the shoulder region, so that suggests is that this was almost like a porcupine in a way, but it's actually an ankylosaur, not a notosaur. And so that actually actually answers your question right there. And so next week there'll be a special episode, so I'll let you guys know what kind of uh, marine animal I'll talk about. I'll do a marine animal. I'll probably. Uh, let you guys know what kind of marine animal I want to talk about, and that way um, you guys can actually get to see that. So that will be on next week, Friday, uh, then I actually do that episode and upload it. So uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, on Monday, I'll actually let you guys know what kind of marine animal we'll talk about. And then, of course, uh, you can still send me questions about dinosaurs or any other prehistoric life by emailing me at dinochrist71 at gmail.com. Or just go to my Facebook page, Prehistoric Facts of Dino Chris. Like the page, you can post your questions on the wall or in the comment section. But remember, keep your questions short and to the point. You can also follow me on Twitter at CSGRALL. It's my Twitter page. I post pretty cool stuff on there. Also, take care, to people, take care of the people around you. And also, for your younger people out there, to make sure to listen to your parents, your teachers, and your guardians. It's the best motivation you can have for good education. It's very important to have good education with a good education. We've got a good job in the future. All right. That's it for now, and I'll see you guys next week.